Hey y'all, it's me, Cheesy Panini. Today I thought I'd do a small house since I haven't done one in a while. I might actually just do small builds like these for the time being until I've gotten the hang of things again. So for this house I'm making, I wanted to do something cute and somewhat rustic, using earth tones for the exterior. I wanted circular windows, which ended up becoming diamond shaped, which is still cute so I don't mind. I just wanted something that's different from the usual. The majority of the paint colors I used for the exterior were yellow, deep orange, brown, and gray. If you're curious about the olive green color of the wall, you get that from painting blue dynasty walls with yellow paint. I like the idea of placing this house somewhere in the forest, where it just kind of blends in, like it was really meant to be there. Sometimes when I make builds like these, I like thinking up of stories of how or why this build came to be. In this instance, I imagine that this was a pretty old house and used to be owned by an elderly couple, which explains the rustic and somewhat old-fashioned design. I'd imagine the house was also made for their retirement and they spent the rest of their lives in it. I can also imagine that even though this is made in the forest, it's also just a walking distance away from a town, so it wasn't too hard to get food, necessities, and electricity. Ugh, slime rain. Doesn't it bother you how often this happens while you're building? Actually, there's a fix for that. You can either do it the hard way and kill a lot of slime so that the slime king appears and the slime rain would stop after killing it, or just use an enchanted sundial or the heroes mods for sundial to speed up the day because slime rain always ends at night. Though you can't make it happen by just changing it from day to night, it has to be through the sundial. Anyways, where was I? Alright, this house actually has a second floor where the bedroom used to be. As they grew older and were having difficulty climbing up and down the stairs, they decided to hire a caregiver. She was very diligent at work and lived with them for a good three years until the caregiver stopped coming to work one day, only leaving a note that said that she ran off to get married to a sweetheart several miles away from here. Now during that time, their granddaughter, we shall be naming Lizzie, was out of a job and was struggling to be a published writer. She had been making newspaper articles here and there, but wasn't really making enough for rent and her daily needs. And her parents weren't very supportive, so she decided to stay with her grandparents instead. And it was here that she was able to write the most riveting stories. Between the gossip she gets from town, as well as the weird sound she would often hear at night, it was enough to get her imagination to run wild. After two years, she was finally able to get her book published and it sold millions of copies worldwide and she achieved her dream of traveling to different countries, leaving her grandparents behind but sending them letters and visiting often. So it's no wonder that when the elderly couple passed away a few years later, that they decided to give the house to Lizzie. After she inherited the house, she decided to retain the exterior but change some of the interior to better suit her tastes. By the door was a coat rack, a shoe rack, some wall hooks, and a bowl where she'd place spare change or her house keys. Her grandparents were really into Asian furniture and she decided to keep them as a way to remember them by. So there's a table by the chimney with two chairs because she really doesn't get that many visitors anyway, and also because the game won't let me add more chairs in the small space. Anyway, I told you her grandparents were really into Asian furniture, so they kind of copied the doorway from a Japanese restaurant that they used to frequent back in the day. Lizzie kind of liked how breezy it was and just retained it. Besides, blue and yellow were her favorite colors. The portrait that hangs on the wall is something Lizzie picked up on her travels and sent to her grandparents because they were fond of sunflowers, but they didn't really want to grow any because they were too tough to manage. 
The kitchen is actually pretty small and simple, with a broom closet at the left side underneath the stairs. It has a dustpan, a broom, and a bucket. And yes, I'm using a dart trap as a bucket, because I can't place real buckets on the floor, and the dart trap was the closest thing I could get. The stove is at the other side of the room, next to the chimney, because that's also where the vent is connected to. Next to it is some cabinets. Her knives, yes, those are her knives. She deals with some very tough meat from time to time. A sink, the trash can, and a refrigerator. It was here that her grandmother taught her how to cook for herself because before she stayed with her grandparents, the only thing she knew how to cook was fried eggs. And she was not even good at it. If your egg whites turn into egg browns without any kind of sauce in it or something, you're probably doing it wrong. Now the second floor is the floor that was heavily renovated because it was beginning to fall apart and had a couple of leaks here and there. Since it was going to be renovated anyway, Lizzie thought it was a good opportunity to put some of her personality in it. First and foremost, she wanted a library by the window on a loft above her bed where she would relax and read her books. Most of these books are books she's collected over the years, while some of them are books given to her by fans, fellow authors, and family members. She probably even has books that were written in languages she can't even read. And like I said before, she really loves blue and yellow because it reminds her of sunflowers and the blue sky. So she has a couple of light fixtures and furniture with that theme in mind. She even had her room painted with the colors of the sky. I think my favorite part of this build was the library because it's so nice and cozy. Of course, you can't have a house without a bathroom. The bathroom is actually pretty small, but it has all the essentials, including a shower. That actually works. As in, I put some rain clouds above these platinum bricks and had a lever that would actuate the bricks so that the rain would fall and it would look like you're actually having a shower. I also put a little bit of water in there because it could also double as a mini tub. And we can't forget our toilet, with toilet paper of course, and our sink with a mirror. And there we have it, Lizzie's house. Now that all the parts are complete, it's time to set it up. I actually wanted to do a little bit of landscaping for the background, but I've decided to do that in another video instead and let this video focus on the creation of the small house. So what I wanted to do with the interiors is to position them underground and just far enough for the teleporters to transfer you without the camera panning or moving like this. If it's far enough, it would look a lot more seamless and doesn't give you the impression that the teleporter just teleported you underground. It's also important to paint the rest of the backgrounds and surrounding areas with shadow paint. You can surround it with shadow painted blocks or just shadow painted walls instead, but in this case, I preferred the blocks because this build looks better when the blocks blend in my opinion. And before you move on to the other interiors, it's really important that you check if there are blocks or furniture that are missing or just doesn't look right. Like in this case, for some reason, the cheat sheet mod couldn't copy Skyware dressers. You should also make sure that the wires don't accidentally touch other items that can be activated like torches, blocks, or doors, and so on. As for the kitchen and the bathroom, I place them at the left and the right sides, respectively. If you guys want to learn more about making houses with exteriors and interiors, you can also check out this two-part video I made on making a Weigel village house. Now I won't be making this map available yet since I'm not really completely done with it yet. I'm still gonna do landscaping. so. That would probably come later on. I know this video is a little different from my usual and I'm actually experimenting on different kinds of content. I wanted to make something that's not completely instructional but still interesting to watch. 
So I would really appreciate the feedback you guys could offer as it would help me improve my videos and give me some idea of what kind of stuff you like. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment and share me your thoughts and if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe and click that bell icon so you could be notified when I have a new video up. I hope you guys are doing well at this time with everything that's been happening. Please stay safe, everything will be okay. For now, I'm just gonna go do my thing and you guys do your thing and I'll see you guys later. Take it easy, stay cheesy.